Today on BRS TV, we continue our filtration series with an episode dedicated to organic filtration, which utilizes living organisms to filter the aquarium. We'll give an overview of refugiums, carbon dosing methods like vodka and bio pellets, and finish with the Zeobit system. All of these are methods of cultivating algae or bacteria to remove nutrients from the aquarium. Refugiums are probably the most popular type of filtration we'll go over today. The concept is super simple. The net result of adding foods to the tank is a buildup of nitrate and phosphate, both of which feed algae growth. A refugium takes advantage of this relationship by growing easy to contain algae like Ketomorpha or Calerpa. As these algae grow, they uptake nitrate and phosphate, which temporarily removes nutrients from the water. Permanent removal is as easy as taking a handful of the algae and throwing it in the trash. This is really one of the most natural and easiest ways to remove nutrients. The effectiveness of a refugium is largely a component of the size and design. The common small hang-on units can be a component of an overall nutrient reduction system, but unlikely to be a complete solution. Refugiums like this are also used to provide a safe haven for microfauna, copepods, and amphipods to reproduce for continual addition to the tank. This is most commonly done to provide a natural diet of copepods for mandarins, which otherwise can be a fairly difficult fish to keep healthy. Larger refugiums located in the sump will be much more effective from a nutrient reduction standpoint. Larger the better. The more algae you can grow, the faster you can harvest it to remove the nutrients. Luckily, many of the common algae used in refugiums have known nitrate and phosphate contents. For instance, a study done by the Journal of Marine Biology found every dry gram of some Calerpa species harvested will contain around 0.08% phosphorus by weight and 5.6% nitrogen. The net result of removing 10 dry grams from a 40-gallon tank would be a reduction of more than 0.2 parts per million phosphate and 20 parts per million nitrate, which is a significant reduction. There are three basic types of algae used in refugiums, ketomorpha, calerpa, and mangroves. My personal favorite is ketomorpha and what I suggest to most new reefers because it's easy to maintain and harvest. Calerpa is better left to more advanced reefers. While it does grow fast, it can be difficult to remove from the main display if it escapes the fuge. And on rare occasions, it can go sexual, which will have a really negative impact on the tank. Some reefers also use mangroves. While this looks really nice and can create a whole new habitat in the tank, most people believe the growth and nutrient uptake is too slow to be a primary component of nutrient reduction. While some reefers will light the fuge 24-7, it's more common to light the fuge at night on a reverse light cycle from the tank, which will help stabilize the typical pH swings that happens on most tanks at night. Overall, a fuge can be a really interesting addition to any tank. Even the small hang-on options will provide some nutrient reduction, a continual source of copepods and amphipods, as well as help stabilize the pH. If your primary goal is uptake of nutrients, the system should absolutely be a large remote or sump-based refugium. Another way to reduce nutrients via organisms is by promoting the population growth of bacteria by adding a food source also known as organic carbon dosing. While many people will tell you they know the exact function of how this all works, it's largely theory. Most of what I'll discuss today is the generally accepted theory. What we do know is it's effective solution for nutrient control, probably best practiced by advanced reefers. I say advanced reefers because there are a lot of unknowns and most of these methods require close attention to the tank, while most people experience a tremendous amount of success with these methods, a small portion of people will experience some pretty negative results. It's difficult to say why this is the case because there's no obvious evidence linking the different experiences. My guess is most of the negative results are related to not fully understanding how carbon dosing works, lack of attention to what's happening in the tank, or patients implementing a new system. Many people use carbon dosing as a solution to get already extremely high nutrients down, which is going to result in explosive bacterial growth and big changes to water chemistry. I personally think it's a much better idea to significantly increase your water change quantity and frequency for a couple of months to get the levels down first and then implement the carbon dosing to maintain these new low levels. 
One of the more common forms of carbon dosing is dosing ethanol, which is easily added by dosing vodka. Dosing vodka will stimulate the growth of bacteria, which will consume nitrate and phosphate into their biomass, which will temporarily remove the nutrients from the water column. Similar to the algae in the refugium, we need to remove the bacteria from the tank for the nutrient reduction to be permanent. Since we really can't grab a handful of bacteria like we can algae, we need to rely on our protein skimmer to remove it for us. For this reason, it's wise to use a highly efficient skimmer if you plan on implementing any carbon dosing method. A skimmer will also help promote proper gas exchange, which can be important. The bacteria growth can significantly reduce dissolved oxygen levels without proper gas exchange. Well, vodka dosing is an extremely effective method of removing nutrients. It's a method implemented by a fairly small percentage of reefers because it requires more attention than most people are willing to put into it. It also requires more daily tasks with the daily doses, and most of us are not looking for more tasks. Hence the development of what most people refer to as biopellets. Biopellets are a pelletized hard organic carbon source, which are thought to operate on most of the same principles as other carbon dosing methods like vodka. The primary difference is they don't have to be added daily, which removes most of the work, and they're generally tumbled in a reactor. The reactor serves two purposes. First, you can ensure the entire system water volume passes through the reactor many times a day. Second, the tumbling effect cleans the bacterial biofilm off the surface of the pellets and sends it into the water column where the skimmer can remove it. The science and theory behind biopellets is a bit less clear and not as well understood by our industry. For instance, I've seen some brands, including ours, effective on tanks that don't utilize the skimmer, which really challenges the consensus of how they work. It's been theorized that some types of pellets behave differently and promote a reaction that results in nitrogen gas or nitrous oxide which floats out of the tank. I think the understanding is a bit murkier, partially because it's a relatively new practice, but mostly because manufacturers are fairly secretive about the type of material they're using. Seems like it can range from corn-based products to biogradable plastics to materials produced by bacteria. Since I can't really speak on what other brands are using for sure, I'll let you know what our biopellets are made of so you can get a better understanding of what a biopellet is. My suspicion is some, but not all, are using the same or very similar material. Ours are made of a material known as PHA, which is a natural substance produced by bacteria to store carbon and energy when there's an excess source of organic carbon, but there's low availability of phosphate or nitrogen. They can then utilize this stored carbon at a later date when phosphate and nitrogen become available again. Since our tanks are often rich in phosphate and nitrogen but low in organic carbon, this is a relatively natural option for providing organic carbon to the tank. Regardless of the type of carbon dosing you choose, whether it be vodka, bio pellets, or even something else, I'd like to reiterate this really isn't for the casual reefer. There are a ton of other methods to control nutrients. Organic carbon dosing is really best suited for people who are really engaged in their tanks, have the need to try new things, and have the experience to make them successful. Lastly, we have Zeovid. Zeovid is fairly secretive about what's in the products themselves, so some of this is a bit of a mystery, but there is a general consensus on the four basics. For the most part, I try and stay away from products that aren't clear on what's in them or how they work, but in this case, I have to say the results speak for themselves. Zeovit tanks are fairly easy to spot. They typically have a unique pastel look to the corals, which is often pretty stunning. At its core, Zeovit is really a combination of chemical filtration and presumably organic carbon dosing that's designed to achieve a low nutrient environment close as possible to a natural reef environment to promote coral health and coloration. One of the common complaints with Zeovid is you need to continually use a variety of their products, which aren't necessarily cheap. But with that comes one major benefit some other methods don't have. An extremely active user base willing to share their long-term results, as well as detailed instructions on how to start the system. Zeovit users have a pretty active forum dedicated just to this method of reefing at zeovit.com, where you can ask questions from actual users and see their results. Many of them have been using this system for long periods of time, so you can get the most important form of advice, which is advice from people who have experienced long-term success with their reef tank. 
The Zeovit method is the combination of four products, the first of which is the Zeovit Media, which is a mix of zeolites with a complex pore network designed to adsorb or ion exchange a variety of elements in the aquarium. The most important of which is the ability to remove ammonia and ammonium, which will significantly reduce the amount of nitrite and nitrate added to the tank. The media has a large porous surface area, which promotes bacterial growth, so the media also becomes a bacterial filter as well. What makes this a bit different is they want to promote specific strains of bacteria with the Zeobac product. Zeobac claims to promote a chain of nutrient reducing bacteria strains rather than a monoculture of one dominant strain that would eventually occur without dosing Zeobac. The third product in the basic four is Zeofood, which is a mix of amino acids and vitamins designed to feed corals and the bacteria. The last product in the basic four is Zeostart, which is a bacterial food and presumably some form of organic carbon, which they recommend to be dosed daily. They also recommend the following other maintenance. Consistent use of high quality activated carbon, used passively in a mesh bag and replaced every month. They recommend against the use of UV sterilizers and ozone, which could kill the bacteria. They also state that the basis of the entire Zeovit method relies on using a highly efficient skimmer. That's pretty much the core of the Zeovit system needed to be successful. If you spent any time previously looking at this product line, you'll know they also have dozens of other products that can be used in conjunction with the Zeovit system or separately with standard tanks. Most of them claim increases in overall coral health or increased growth, but many of them have very direct claims, which is nice. For instance, the potassium iodide fluoride product clearly states it will enhance blue pigments and the iron concentrate will increase green coloration. If you haven't caught on to this yet, the Zeovit system is more or less the final frontier for most reefers or something really aggressive newer reefers will attempt. If you'd like to try out some of their products without implementing the whole system, most of the other products, including the color enhancers and coral nutrition products, can be used individually outside of the Zeovit system itself. While I still wouldn't really advise the Zeovit method to people fairly new to reefing, the one thing that really separates this system from some of the others is a robust community that's dedicated to supporting the Zeo users and the system's proven results. I honestly prefer low maintenance tanks myself, but it's hard to resist when you see examples like this. How can you not want something like this in your living room? That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and subscribe to our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.